Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I was trying to unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Hold on one moment. I'll grab my Bible. Oh, here we go. We're going to go from Psalms 93. And it reads, the Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, enveloped in strength. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. Your throne has been established from the beginning. You are from eternity. The floods have lifted up, Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their pounding waves, greater than the roar of many waters. The mighty breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is majestic. Lord, your testimonies are completely reliable. Holiness is the beauty of your house for all the days to come. So ends the reading. Precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to examine the Holy Writ and to try to use your spirit, Lord God, to perfect us, Lord God, in our, in our, in our endeavor to to, 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 to endeavor into being more more better disciples in, 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 in your name. Give us the courage, Lord God, to, to follow you. Give us the courage and the ability, Lord God, to walk in our purpose, to walk, walk in the purpose you have, you have given us. We just thank you, Lord God, for our pastor, yes. his family. We just thank you for our families. Bless yes. everyone under the sound of my voice. We just want to be disciples, Lord God, and tell the world of your goodness and your grace and your mercy, Lord God, and your love. Give us the courage to speak boldly, Lord God, and to go boldly into the world. As as, as our Sunday school lesson I learned that today, we we, we bless not against flesh and blood, but principalities mm -hmm. in high places, Lord yes. God. Give us the courage, Lord God, to battle these principalities in, in, mm. your, in your son Jesus' name, Lord God, and in, in your son Jesus' power and might. We just want to be Disciples, Lord God, and encourage other disciples, Lord God, to join us as we as we proclaim you as our Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord. These things and all things we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Can you all see the notes? Yes. Yes. I want to ask a question, please. Okay. In reference to um say even Ray's praise prayers there, when he mentioned principalities, and that's always used in uh, this armor of God uh, uh, uh principalities. So I says, Well, let me look this up. And in in the dictionary, it's it the the, the uh the definition was princes. Is that what it means spiritually? I would have to look it up. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. let you know. Okay, thank you so okay. much. I'll do that. After I finish the sermon tomorrow. <laughs> so tonight we're going to talk about spiritual infants. Mm -hmm. So we, we do understand what it means to be spiritually dead. Yeah. Separated from God. No connection. Yes. <laughs> So when we talk about spiritual infants, the infant stage of being a disciple, it refers to a state of being spiritually immature. Mm -hmm. We understand that. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it basically describes people who are still relying on the basics or what we would call spiritual milk. They lack knowledge and understanding of what Jesus taught. And, and we have to understand that spiritual infants, they may be influenced by the world's philosophies and have a self-centered perspective. And they seek to fulfill their needs and look to look, look and prioritize their needs rather than growing their relationship with God. I know, say, our reading emphasizes the need for these infants to progress towards solid spiritual food, maturity, and the ability to teach others. So I have a couple of questions here. 
and let me bounce these off you. How can we effectively nurture and guide individuals in their journey from spiritual infancy to maturity, helping them to move from relying on milk to a deeper understanding of God's teaching? How do we do that? Knowing the word yourself. And, and I would say, I would add to that, you know, we have to know the word for ourselves, but we have to put it in, put, yes, put it in action. Well, I think one of the things we can do is not leave them alone. A spiritual, immature individual is like, almost like an infant or a child. Mm -hmm. And you have to teach them as they grow. <laughs> um, so you can't leave them alone and expect them to be able to mature uh, properly. They will grow up, but they're going to grow up with um, some misinformation. So we have to be able to be right there alongside of them. And, and as you say, mentoring or discipling and the stages where they are. We can't expect them to um, be where we are because it took us many years to get to where we are. We have to be patient with them. Anybody else? Yeah, and, and I and I think th those are good uh, those are, are good things that Michelle said, but I think first we have to get to know them first. Getting to know them, then we can engage them on their level and we can like slowly, slowly um, share what we know about Christ and be living examples also yes. how we walk ourselves. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. And one of the things we talked about last week, last week we talked about being able to make a proper assessment of people. We have to be able to assess what's spiritually appropriate because sometimes everybody everybody, everybody can't eat meat some people have to have their meat a little less a little more well done than others sometimes you you have to be you have to give them material um i, I wouldn't say black or better age appropriate for them and um so some point. things some some we have to we have to be able to make proper assessment of people of, what, what what they're ready for, what they're not ready for, because everybody, everybody ain't ready for everything at the same time. Like you said, we came in here at different levels. We came in at different different levels of decay, and everybody's not ready for a root canal. Everybody ain't ready for a whole new set of dent, a whole new bridge of uh, bridges. <laughs> Some people just may need a tooth pull. Some need their, need their whole whole grill yanked out. <laughs> we have to be able to make that a, 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 a proper assessment on, on how much decay they have. And uh, um, and then we have to take time to see. So, their... so, so it takes an investment. Yes. And, and one of the things you said is that we have to meet different people in different places. Right. So when you right. say that, what what I see is that it cannot be only the, the 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 responsibility of discipling cannot fall on one or two people. No, that's right. Because it would be an overwhelming task, and really, there's no way for one or two or three people to be successful meeting everybody's where they are if it's just a few people. Right. So it takes everybody. Let me ask this other question. In what ways can we address the we can we address the influence of worldly philosophies and self-centeredness among believers in order to foster a stronger focus of growing in relationship with God and fulfilling his purpose? God's true purpose is love. I, I truly believe that his true purpose is love and showing us love and and his strength in love. And we have to show that love to it, it, with other people with patience, <laughs> tolerance, <clears throat> that long suffering, because it took us a long, like, like Sister Michelle said, said we, we, some of us have been here for, for quite a few cups of coffee. We've been here for a minute. 
and we still ain't got it right. We still, we still, we still need work, and we have to show that same love to 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 to, 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 to converts that want to become disciples. We have to show patience and love with them also, like Jesus shows us love. There, there was I was looking for something on my phone, but it was something that I think I said to Stacy. I, I can't find it right now. But what it talked about, it talked about how a man came to church with his wife. <clears throat> and I think during the sermon, he forgot to put his phone on vibrate or silent. And the phone goes off. Mm -hmm. And everybody criticized him. Mm -hmm. It came down on him hard about his actions. <clears throat> you know, how could you do that? Blah, 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 blah. And these are people in the church. And they said, mm -hmm. after all of this went down, he went to a bar mm. <laughs> and he went to the bar and he accidentally spilled his drink. And he was expecting, you know, the same ridicule that he mm. had gotten earlier. But some the bartender asked him, is everything OK? Mm -hmm. And the bartender came and wiped it up and poured him a fresh drink. Other people came to him and said, oh, you know, is everything OK? You know, you know, are you okay? You know, it'll be all right. And so what happened was they showed him more compassion <laughs> in the bar <clears throat> than they did in the church. Mm. And he still goes to that bar to this day. Mm. Mm. Well, as Ray said, he felt love and he felt acceptance right where he was in the moment. And that is one of the reasons why when you walk through the, the doors of the church, mm -hmm even before the sermon starts or any of that happens, being greeted by someone who actually cares makes such a difference. Whether you are a believer who has been there for a very long time or someone who's just found their way in front of the church and the Holy Spirit led them inside, there are things happening in people's lives that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. And sometimes somebody's smiling at you or just saying, good morning, how are you? You know, I'm so glad that you found your way here today. It makes a difference. Right. And, and, and like you said, we don't know what people are going through. And even if we do know what they're going through, we don't know the magnitude in which it affects them. So we have to be mindful of that and be willing to show love in spite of. Well, if you um if if you're when you're out, and I know sometimes if I'm talking to someone on you know, like a street who you run into and you're trying to encourage them to maybe come to church or whatever, mm -hmm. and you say to them, Oh, come come to Hope Missionary Baptist Church on Sunday, blah, 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 you know, and let the Lord, you know have his way with you they would say some of them would say no these are my friends out here on the street just like how you said about the bar situation mm -hmm. <clears throat> because they the world take care of their own in a sense you know they they really feel a sense of belonging and mm -hmm. unity because when they go to the house of the lord they've been and they're frowned upon and they're looked mm -hmm. upon because they're still you know they're not like them so a lot of times that is the reason why a lot of people, a lot of won't come into the church because they feel like my brother out here really have my back, even though, you know, they don't know the Lord maybe in that sense, but that is one of the things that they'll say is the people in the church are fake, you know, but mm -hmm. these are my buddies, you know, they hold each other. They, they believe that because they're not passing judgment on them. And so, you know, we have to find a better way sometimes how we conduct ourselves, you know, when they do come to the house of the Lord and don't let them feel like that. You should know already, uh, you know, well, we're not having that in here. So it's a turn off. Yes, it is. Well, Pastor, and, 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 how, 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 how do we how do we change that the way we in the church? affect people because that's a big thing and it, and it goes on continuously in all churches yeah there well well number one we need to be pursuing the holiness of god 
Mm -hmm. And and, and there are mag there are magnitude of bullet points that can fall up under that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think first and foremost, from my years in the church, we need to be better uh, pursuers of God. And I mean, as far as prayer, we talk about, you know, being in his presence. We talk about studying his word, reflecting on the word and allowing the word to penetrate our heart. And mm -hmm. what we we have to understand is that we, and we've talked about it before, that being a disciple takes work. Mm -hmm. Being a disciple takes work. And it, and it is never it has never been promised to us that the, the road to discipleship was going to be easy and that we were going to be loved and adored. But I think when we come, we have this misconception when we come down the aisle that all of our problems are going to go away. You know, you know, we're going to cast our cares upon him and every day is going to be a good day and we're going to have an abundance of overflow. And it doesn't work that way all the time. And so, but we have to be committed to God and we have to be accountable to one another. We have to be willing to receive the criticism that we are so ready to give out about other people when it pertains to us. It's been my experience when in dealing with people that people are ready to evaluate other people. But they're not. It, it, what, the, what, the, what do we say on first Sunday? Let a man examine himself. But they mm -hmm. won't examine them their themselves and see what they need to change. And so I think it starts with us, you know, really, you know, doing a, a evaluation in house. Because you know, I you know, I've been in, like I said, I've been in the church since I'm five years old. That's forty five years, and um, I've seen the downfall. And a lot of the downfall that I've seen has has come has 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 manifested itself because of the behavior of the church people, yeah. and so and, and you know the 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 backbiting, the fighting, um, affairs in the church, um, all this all this stuff, and people are seeing these things, and what they're saying to themselves is, why do I need to go there? And they got the same issues in the world. <clears throat> What's different? What's different? And that's why I said years ago, the church has to be a place where people that can experience something they can't get anywhere else. Yes, it's love, but you know you have to be able to accept people how they are and love on them where they are. Like you, like uh, I think somebody said tonight. I stated, Ray stated, we we come with different levels of decay. Mm -hmm. We have to be willing to meet people there. Um, the the story I, I tell tell you a story. When dealing with discipleship, I had a guy that, you know, he's an acquaintance. He's very, he's very extra when it comes to stuff. Very, very, very extra. So he would, they did a Christmas play and he decided, and he's a young guy at the time. And he decided he was playing a homeless person in the play. So he decided he was going to go all out to play this homeless guy. <laughs> so he came to church in full character. Mm. He, you know, he was a member of the church, but he came in full character and he came and he sat down doing Sunday school. Remember our Sunday school is in the beginning. And so all of a sudden, so he got up and he went to the water fountain and all of a sudden a bunch of people rushed out to where he was and to kind of see what was going on with him. And they were ready to, you know, to, they had judged him and didn't realize it was him instead of accepting him. When somebody comes into our church that maybe they don't smell like us, maybe they don't look like us, maybe they're not as groomed as we are, we still have to accept them the same way we accept one another. And I think that's the that's the that's the thing that happens in the church. If you look at what happened was it earlier this week with the National Baptist Convention, where they deleted the woman's sermon off of Facebook. You know, it's stuff like that that puts a bad taste in people's mouth. And so we have to be willing to clean that up. It's, and, and, and I think that it's a, this is my personal preference. You can't give people a pass. I don't care what their title is. You can't give them a pass. You know, you know that, that's a pastor. We're not going to say nothing to him. Or that's a bishop. We're not going to say nothing to him. We have to be accountable to somebody, you know, you know, our church and or, you know, we have to be accountable to God, but we have to be accountable to somebody. So we can be, have an ear to hear when somebody says that we need correction. Mm hmm. Yes. That's my opinion. So let's move yeah. on. <laughs> Did I answer that? 
David. David. He's trying to get himself off mute. Okay. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, you did, kind of, sort of. Yeah. It, it, I think it, I think it's, it's bigger than what I was saying. It's way bigger than that. But we, we have to be able to correct the issues in house. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 That 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 that's that for sure. Yeah. And, and it's it's not just at our church. It's every church. Yeah. <laughs> can I just say one thing? Yes. Um. As far as individuals who, I, I think the self-assessment is um, very important. Um, and our self-assessment comes pairing ourselves to the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, um, but also, so, to encourage, and I think that's what everybody else was talking about. How you, how do you, what is you, my internet's going in and out? I apologize, my internet's going in and out. But how we encourage one another, and and one way I think that how we encourage people who see um, hypocrisy in the church, or in the, or in, I won't say in the church, how they see hypocrisy in some of the members who come to the church um, is to acknowledge it for what it is and then to say again let's point point them back to Jesus we can't always excuse our bad behavior but even if I have bad behavior we still want to point them to Jesus because Jesus is the only one that's going to save them not individual people, deacon who and who and whatever, those people aren't going to save you. It's 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 more important to point them to Christ and compare compare each of ourselves to the scripture. And and also um I had an instance where a conversation with an individual was like, oh well, you know, this I didn't want to do things because I didn't like how so and so did it. Stop. Try not to focus on that so and so, and try and focus on Jesus, and then giving them the opportunity to communicate with you or with me. You know, share with me when it becomes an issue, or what do you think is an issue, or something like that. To be like, yeah, maybe it could have been done a little bit differently. What would you have done differently? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing differently? How are you? Um, walking with the Lord, or have you just decided you don't want Jesus? Which one is it? Is it that you don't want to be in the church because there's hypocrites there? Or is it because you have a closer walk with Jesus outside the church? What is your behavior? Let me hear what you're doing. Sometimes just having that opportunity of having a two-way street conversation helps them to realize that you're not necessarily judging them to put them in a, to send them to hell, but you're just trying to relate to them. Mm -hmm. And so the whole point of pointing back to Jesus, because he's the one who's going to make the decision. He's the one making the decision as to, he knows who's hypocritical and don't you worry, God handles everyone who is hypocritical. He handles it inside the church as well as outside the church. And one of the things we get we could talk about that's a good point at pointing them back to Jesus, but we have to let them know also that the church is not a place for perfect people. All of us are sick. It's a hospital. That's right. And because it's a hospital, you are going to find hypocritical behavior. Mm -hmm. You will. But. Because just because there's hypocritical behavior does not mean you don't go. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, the church is full of sick people. We all agree. But it's funny that we don't have that same attitude if we're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Don't take me to the South Side because it's full of sick people. We want to get to where we can get a healing. 
And I think, and I like what Sister Sharon said. In doing that, we point them to Jesus. But but the only thing with that, Sister Sharon, too, the issue is, and I tell us to our church members is that sometimes we're the only Jesus that people will ever see. And so we have to be mindful of that in our behavior. But yes, we should point them to Jesus. Um, so keep... past... oh, yes. I'm sorry. I know you're trying to get past and you're trying to get through. And we're talking about, um, in essence, new disciples, right? Uh, but if we're trying to point them to Jesus and, and they're going to a place, it's similar, it's like similar to a hospital and you have sick people on all different levels. How can I put this? You have a group of people that are still sick, but they're serving. Yes. And <laughs> they're serving the new people coming in who are clueless about what they're walking into. So wouldn't you think that you would, uh, I would personally, this would be my, my view. If, if I was running a hospital, the first thing I would do is I would get the whole staff, like everybody from the janitors on up to the doctors. And I'd be like, listen, you know, this is customer service. We need to do this such as what you're doing here with us. You know what I'm saying? But and, and the whole staff should be here. Truth, 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 truth. I mean, you can't make people, and that's the whole thing. That's it. I, I've said this before. <clears throat> There's a saying you're preaching to the choir. That's all I could say. I'm gonna leave right. it there. Yeah, well, we you know, we and we discuss it. And we discuss it. And it, it is up to us to come up, and you'll see as we progress through the lesson, it's, it's up to us to put the strategies in place. Amen. We're, here, we're here learning Amen. about it. So yeah, I understand that, but I, you know, that we're preaching to the choir because you know, it, yeah, but, you are. But, <laughs> right. but 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 we have to understand that too that you know it, it's a hospital, but we but we but we still have to do what we got to do. Amen. None of us are perfect, you know. None of us are perfect. We all go through issues. We all have um, tough times, but we still got to persevere. We talked about that last night, Michelle. Yes, we did. You're right. Yeah, right. We, you still got to persevere. You still got to do what God says do. And, right. and clean up your wounds later. Amen. 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 Let, you let, know, go ahead, Ray. This makes me think of um, the the paralytic that was brought before Jesus. It was a whole house, a whole house full of people. They tore, they brought him, they dropped him down through the roof. Beautiful. <laughs> they dropped him down through the roof, and he was the only one that 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 they felt needed needed Jesus. It was a whole house full of people. House full of sinners, and none of them, none of them thought that they thought because he he was a para, 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 he was a paralytic that he needed Jesus more than more than all of them in there needed Jesus, but only the paralytic uh, uh, re received Jesus. But see, also if you look at the story, the sick people brought the sick man to Jesus. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But the sick the sick people had faith. Just to save faith, they had the faith, and so and that, that, and that's and that's a primary. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's that's us. Yeah. We we we're, we're sick, but we have enough faith to say we know to to minister to Sharon or to minister to Ray to minister to anybody. But in the midst of us being sick, and they and they and they went through obstacles to get their friend to Jesus. Yes, they did. And they if you look at the story, they also had to deal with the burden. Of being that guy's friend, yeah, it was it was it wasn't easy dealing with somebody sick. Mm. But to bring it back to you, know, and, and that's the that's the that's the attitude we have to have dealing with the with the with the converse. We have to we have to know that we're we're not perfect either, and we have to understand that they're not going to be perfect. But we we have to show them love and compassion the way Jesus shows us love and compassion. We have to. We have to. We have to. You know, the Bible says, "Treat, treat your neighbor as you as you, as you want as you want to treat you as you want to be treated." Yes, and, and I think that's important that we, you know, if, if we treat people the way we want to be treated, that that would encourage people to 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 want to be uh, get involved with the discipleship, not just be a convert. Mm -hmm. They have to see it. 
it, it, that, that story, that story, that, that, that Bible story is a prime example because they took care of the man that was sick. Yeah. Thank it's you. our job to take care of those who are sick, even in our condition. And not only did they did they they had the they had they they heard about Jesus, they had the faith that Jesus could do it. But also, when they got to the house, they didn't just stop because the house was full. See, it, 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 it somebody what, what, it was something somebody it's something that was said. It said that uh, uh, I, they say, I, the saints always say, "I can do all things through Christ through Christ who strengthens me." But mm -hmm. the person said, "You don't even come to church when it rains." <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm being serious, but yeah. so, but the Baptist, thing is, Baptist folk. That's <laughs> another joke. Baptists don't go to church in the rain, right? But see, but not only, but they got to the full house. You know, it was raining, but they went through obstacles and they tore down the roof to get their friend into Jesus's presence. Mm. Are we willing to go through that effort? For somebody else to get blessed. Ooh. Amen. See, most of the time in our culture, not saying our church, in our culture, if we're going through, we are going through those obstacles, we're looking to get something out of it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So that's and that's a that's a perfect story to talk to talk about to kind of parallel with discipleship. Is that we we have to do something. We even if even in our state of not being perfect, we're not perfect. All have mm -hmm. sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Are we willing to go the extra mile so somebody else can get blessed? Yes, indeed. <laughs> in connection to that analogy of the infants, connecting it back to that, I've seen little kids. I mean, if you want to consider it like babies, how would you guard babies? But I've seen little kids that are a little bit older, like eight-year-olds or five-year-olds, try to help a one-year-old try and walk. Ah, uh, so yeah. cute. Yes. And they're like, they're running around. They, they're, you know, they just learned how to walk last year. And now they're trying yeah. to help somebody to be able to walk. So that whole concept of those that are a little more mature always want to maybe not always, but always want to try and help those that are a little less mature than they are to get to whatever's good. And so because we believe that Jesus uh -huh. is what's best for them, then that's our goal is to try and point them towards growing a little bit more. Don't you want to try this vegetable? It's a carrot. It, try the carrot. Watch me eat the carrot. You eat the carrot. They're not just going to grow up with an appetite for carrots. You got to give them a little mm -hmm. taste and a little bit and keep showing them. Like you guys were saying earlier, just trying to encourage. But remember, remember what Michelle said. You're preaching to the choir. Mm -hmm. So now what you said, and I, and I agree 100 percent, try Jesus. This is the best thing for you. But in order to get somebody to try something you like, you got to try it first. Mm -hmm. And some folks haven't tried him for themselves. What, what, what we say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, you, can, you, you don't know he's good if you ain't never tasted him. Mm. Why can I, I can't tell Ray, Ray, taste the Lord. He's good if I ain't never tasted him myself. So what I'm saying is that we have to make sure that, but in, in other words, that we, are, that we have tasted his sweetness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then and we can say, I, you know, and, and, and we can pass it on to somebody else. And our discipleship not only goes to the new convert, but it goes to the person who's been <laughs> who's been walking for a long time and who is still um I don't want to say searching, but I, I will a say child. this. Well, yeah. I'm like gonna say, I'm, gonna say, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I agree with you, but I don't agree with you. Okay, talk to me. I agree with you. You're right. Mm -hmm. I believe that charity starts at home. Mm -hmm. You, we, no, and I might be preaching to the choir, so I'm not. So don't take it personal. You mm -hmm. have to be doing it with your family, mm -hmm. right? But prayerfully, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get out is, Pastor, is that we're discussing primarily. Our, our discipleship concerning the people of the world or the people who are coming into the church to new converts. Yes. And that is an important aspect of what we're doing. 
So prayerfully, all the things that you talked about, we are doing them at home or we're striving to do them, but um, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. Yeah, and I'm listening, but, but I'm saying we, that we should start at home and it should bubble out. Okay. Just because because, that, because because we should, because it's, it's just like that. anything just like anything in church, all of us should be praying at home. Mm-hmm. Yes. All of us should be worshiping at home. Uh, yes. All of us should be, you know, in the scriptures at home. And so when right. we come together on Sunday, it should just be a it, sh- it should be what we normally do, right. but we're doing it together. And that's what I'm saying. Yes. It starts at home first. We, you know, and we say it starts at church, but you know, it, it it is a church thing basically. But what I'm saying is that we have to. I think everybody here wants their family saved. Absolutely. We don't. We Absolutely. don't want to look up at eternity and, and June Bug and Ray Ray ain't there because <laughs> we failed to to, to disciple. We we want, we would take it to church first, but we got to take it home first. That's what, that's all I'm saying. And last week's lesson was about um, families honoring God. And, and the reality is, though, you know, I, I can't speak for each of your homes because I didn't live in them. But the reality is maybe or the parents are t- teaching and being an example to um, to those children and, and growing and having certain expectations. But I don't know about you, but maybe there's a time that you had certain exposure, but then after you, you decided to go a separate way a little bit. And then maybe God called you back in. So you don't know the time that you're, uh, um, that you're meeting that convert, you know, the time of their life. But mm-hmm. maybe now they're reseeking, you know, that maybe they had a foundation, um, but, <clears throat> you know, but, but, but lost it, threw it away for, for whatever that reason may have been. Amen. Amen. I'm glad these these questions sparked some dialogue here tonight. Because college can be quite an influence. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I to be honest, you no, know, I was I, I was raised in the church, Sunday mm-hmm. school, church service, BTU. But when I got to school, I was like, I'm gonna do me. What? <laughs> I'm gonna do me. Do freedom, right? I'm gonna do me. I look. I you know I didn't I didn't go to church. I mean, and on campus, you got any church you can choose from. Some is there. I didn't go to, I, you know, I, I was at, I was watching NFL on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it was. And so, but then, and it, it's funny because it's kind of, it's kind of gets into my sermon for Sunday. But see, that's where I always say, if you always hear me say, God came and got me. Yes. Because mm-hmm. I was out, Ray, I was out there doing the robot. <laughs> looking, looking stupid. <laughs> and, and I was trying, and God said, "No, no, 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 no." He said, "I'm a." And, and it is funny when you look at things in retrospect. When you look at things in retrospect, you know God was saying in college, "Okay, now you on a timetable. You the t- the clock is going to start ticking in a minute. Mm. So, so I got to come get you, and I got to put you where I need you to be because the clock is ticking." Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know that at age 20 some years old. We knew, and God called me in 2000, in 1998, the Thursday after Father's Day. I remember it clearly. Mm-hmm. And so, and I, I didn't I, I didn't want to be no preacher. I didn't want to be no pastor. You know, so and, and so God came and got me. And he put me where he he he, he needed me to be. Mm-hmm. And able to learn those things. And so, like I said, when I was just, I but I, I had made a decision to go my own way mm-hmm. like you said but he came and he got me he said okay no because yeah. he, he, he there's a purpose you that you need to fulfill there's something that you need to do i need for you to do and the time the time is now to start pre- preparing for it mm-hmm. amen. amen i don't think we're gonna finish tonight so we don't we don't we don't, we don't go as far <laughs> as we can get <laughs> mm-hmm. so and it's good it's good that we can talk about it because it's helping us to to think through because at the end of this i put an action plan in place for dealing with it. So we can talk about that more. So it's going to take probably more than one week, but let's go, let's go on as far as we can get. The -hmm. apostle Peter wrote, so put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander and all slander like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk that, that by it, you may grow into salvation. If you, if, if indeed you have tasted 
the Lord is good. We talked about that. People in this phase are spiritually alive. So we understand that. They made a decision to follow Jesus, but that is as far as that the that's as far as they've traveled. And unfortunately, church, many church people are stuck in this phase. Amen. You know, they, they used to say there were three 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 frogs sitting on the log. One decided to jump in. How many are still left on the log? Say it again. <laughs> there were three frogs sitting on the log. One decided to jump in. How many are still on the log? Could two. be two, could be three. No, three. He he decided he didn't uh -huh, jump. Uh -huh. He just decided he was gonna jump. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that, but that's what we that's what we're so we have a lot in the church. We talk about it all the time. Is that the, the one of the biggest problems in the church? Period, and and, and and this affects the discipleship process. Is that people are content with coming to the Lord and being converted? Yeah, mm. yeah, and that's it. They want to go home. They don't want to be bothered. But mm -hmm. the life of a believer is a life of being bothered. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, like like we, we we said, Jesus is about love. Love is a verb. And it action. takes action, and and, and 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 being a disciple, you have to start. Mm -hmm. you have to, some action is involved in being a disciple. Mm -hmm. Action involved in, in showing love for people. You just can't talk about it. You got to be about it. Mm -hmm. and, and and when you talk about loving people, it's like being in love. Mm. When you're in love with somebody, you have to love them. You have to be able to be in love with them when they're at their most unlovable state. Mm. Amen. Amen. As as believers, and we don't like to do it all the time because it's not comfortable, but we have to love unconditionally mm -hmm. those who are the most unlovable. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the Bible says it. Even even the, 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 the unbeliever does good to those who do, do good to them. Right. If, you, if that's what we do, what good? What is that showing? We have to. It, 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 I know it's it's tough because sometimes folk just get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes folk just want to rub you the wrong way. But we have as our job to love them. Because think about it, we rub God the wrong way a lot of time. That's right. Mm -hmm. And He continues to love us. So one of the key things that we learn. Tonight, you know, we like I said, we won't get that far, but we got We got to show love. I think that Mother Wright says that all the time. And, you know, we we have to show love. And let me go back to our, my discussion with Michelle. Our love starts at home. Mm -hmm. If we come into church and loving on folks, but ain't loving on our families, something's wrong, and it's not going to draw them to discipleship, right? Because they're going to say you a phony, you a fake. Mm -hmm. Because you only like that at church. Mm -hmm. Let's get back. Okay. The writer of Hebrews states, about this we have much to say. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. But though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their, their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So let's look at the tendencies of spiritual infants. Spiritual infants tend to lack knowledge about what Jesus taught. Mm. Spiritual mm -hmm. infants are not, are not unintelligent. Spiritual infants are just simply uninformed and in need of truth. And I got this from Ray. Remember, the truth is not always popular. No, it's not. <laughs> but think of, but but that's a key. This is the key to something you can highlight in your notes. They're in need of truth. That means that we as believers, as those who are discipling them, must be filled with the truth, not opinions, not what we heard. We have to be filled with the truth. And that means the word of God. Not only must we be filled with the word of God, we must be living it. 
Amen. I was going to say um, two things, one in reference to the term knowledge, and then in, in reference to the term truth. Um, in, in the message, we were just talking about knowing. Knowing is being able to experience it, not just having heard it, not just being able to regurgitate it or repeat it, but to actually know it. And we say the same thing. We've read scripture, but I came to know it the Lord is able to provide because he provided for me. When I experience something and he proves himself to me in that situation, then I know for myself, I don't need you to have to tell me all the time. Now I know because I have an intimate um, connection to it. And then the truth, not just knowing about Jesus, being able to spell the word Jesus, but actually knowing and having a relationship with him is he is the truth. So if he's not abiding in, you're just saying what you heard somebody else say. Right. And that's the difference between infants and those who actually know him. And, and you can make and you can look at the this comparison, just looking at an actual infant. Number three, often spiritual infants are a part of the world they live in. And what I mean, they're, they're attached to it. The Holy Spirit is working on them and they are receptive to what the word says, but they may also get up, get mixed up with the philosophies and the thoughts of the world. They combine the world's influence with, 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 with the word like a hybrid that works for them. You know how people say, well, you know, this, this is what works for me or that they think it works for them. The, 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 the spiritual lives of the, this, this type of, uh, the spiritual the lives of spiritual infants are generally about them and what they think works to fulfill their perceived needs. Like actual actual infants, spiritual infants know no better. And sometimes we get frustrated, even with some of the older spiritual infants. But we have to be able to identify that they are spiritual infants. And they really don't know any better. Spiritual infants have been trained by the world to consume. Amen. So naturally, they're looking for the pastor. They're looking for the church as a, as a place that will cater to what they want. You ever seen that before? We're believers are in a state of spiritual infancy. Their expressions and actions often reflect their newness, the newness and excitement of their journey of faith. Similar to how we expect infants to be messy, loud, and in need of constant care, spiritual infants may make mistakes and, re that, and require patience as they navigate this newfound belief. So they are going to be messy, loud, and in need of constant care. However, just as there are, we, you know, we, we get joy when we raise our kids and we see them grow up, right? There are wonderful moments of celebration when we are able to witness the transformation in a new believer. It's important for us to know that during this stage of being spiritual infants, the things they say or do may be a reflection of their heart condition as they adjust to the new life in Christ. So how can we effectively address the issues of spiritual immaturity within our church community? I think we kind of discussed that. I think we talked about love. Patience. Uh, pa yeah, patience. Mm -hmm. A lot of patience. <clears throat> I'd like to patience. faithfulness also, like, you know, not just uh, caring for them one time, but, you know, re repeated times. Can I, can, I, can, I ask you, can I ask you a question, Janice? Yes. Did you just care for Chloe once a week? Oh, no. I was a helicopter mom. I still am. <laughs> 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 but but so you you know so the sister Sharon I'm sure you just didn't care for the girls on Sunday. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I know Elder Kill 
didn't just uh, care for Olivia on on, on Friday. Uh, and, and, and most of the time, and yeah. you know, when you know, I I, re, I, can, I remember when Le was an infant, like all of them were infants. They required care, yeah, twenty four hours. <laughs> I you had to be on your P's and Q's. <laughs> you had to be, they had to eat. They had to be clean. They had to be the diapers needed to be changed. Um, they needed to be burped. You had to make sure that they were they were laying the right way with the blanket, you know, uh -huh, so they wouldn't uh -huh. roll over and, and and you had to you had to you had to hold them a certain way. You had you had they had to have the equipment to make sure they were safe in the car, and you had to you know do all that stuff. It was it was it was a it was a chore. Yes, it was a, especially especially the when they're floor. newborn. Don't go down the basement now. <laughs> especially Don't come into the with, kitchen, <laughs> right? You had to keep them isolated in a certain place, but one of the things that um that I do remember is that you know you know every three hours they had to eat, right? They had they had to eat often, as mm -hmm. and, and especially and then that that eating kept going until they got that that got something heavier to eat like cereal, yeah. And there were stages, so they spent a long time on that milk. <laughs> And, and, and check this out. This is a good one. This is a good one, Ray. Not every baby had the same milk. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Not every baby got the same milk. So you, that means you have to, you have to, your style has to vary in your distribution of the milk. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have to be aware of that. And you got to remember, it was a long, it, it was almost a whole year that they were on milk. Every three hours until you put a teaspoon of cereal in that milk. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have if you didn't have wick, that milk cost. Yes. Mm. And, and after every meal was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so the mess so what I'm trying I'm trying to get y'all to see that it takes time. To deal with our new believers, yes. I know. I know. I'm preaching to the choir here, but you know, I gotta start somewhere. Mm -hmm. it, it, so, sure. so, so, what you're seeing is going to be constant work. You're mm -hmm. going to have to have different methods. Mm. Somebody, somebody may be able to sit on Zoom. Somebody may not be able to sit on Zoom. Somebody may read the lesson. Somebody may need to read lessons read to them. They're going to need their milk different ways, and yet they might be getting the milk. And yet, still be messy. Mm -hmm. But you gotta be. You can't. You can't leave the baby at somebody's doorstep. <laughs> oh God forbid! Mm -hmm. But we don't have to reward. We no. don't have to reward people. There you go. Staying immature. Okay, so 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 check this out. You know, you know, right? Right. I you mean, know. I hear what you're saying, and for the sincere baby. That's appropriate, but for the big kid trying to act <laughs> like a baby is one thing. But for us to say, "Yay, good job for still sucking your thumb and and being on your pacifier," is not a good that that's not going to grow our our congregation. But I know the focus here is the infant. Right, so, right. Um, so, so I, I mean, I, I get to, I'm with you, Sister Sharon, because because if, if I, I, and I think I've used this analogy before. But if I say, you know, to the church, you know what? The kids are coming this weekend. The church will be giddy. And if they walk through the doors of the church and oh. pampers, <laughs> <laughs> age 26, 25, and 19, they're coming there with pampers on. They can't speak. They sucking on a bottle. You're gonna be like, y'all gonna be like, what in the heck is wrong with Pastor Mosley? <laughs> Uh, it's 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 something wrong with this man. It's a, it's something wrong with this man. <laughs> like baby kid. <laughs> but but see what look, look, hold on, you laughing? But what do you think people see when us we act like babies? Oh my god! Mm -hmm. They see racing. They were the pacifier going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's that, that's what we look like. We look silly like that, and that's why that's why it behooves us. To mature, yes, and, and encourage them to mature. But we do know that with us, 
dealing with them maturing, it takes time. And, and then, let me tell you something, you know, you know, I have I got everybody. So mm -hmm. I get I get calls, comments, texts, mm -hmm. emails from everybody. You know, and, 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 and some people have different concerns. And I have to be and, I, and, and then there are the extended families. I have to be concerned about them. You can't be concerned about Sharon and not care about Kelly. Right, right. You can't you can't say, well, you know, I I I love the Smiths, but then forget Chloe and the baby. Right, right, right. You got it, it's it's an it's it's a bigger circle than what you see on Sunday morning. If something mm -hmm. if something happens, the you no know, good or bad, I got to be there and be and have a response. Mm -hmm. And so and so it, the key is is that it takes work. Mm -hmm. it, it it takes it take it take work to be your pastor. It's not, it's not it's not just something I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs. Oh yeah, you know, let me just try to figure this out. You know, let me just no. You got to be on your you got to be on your job. You got to be your mind got to be going. Because sometimes because sometimes somebody will say something, you know, they'll be like, I want to talk to you, and I forget, and then something to bring back to my memory. Okay, I got to get back with them, and so it's a constant process. It's constant work. <laughs> It was just so I'm like, you know, it's it was so what I'm trying to say is that it's just not my job to be busy because mm -hmm. there's work. We are, I, somebody said I'm preaching to the choir, and so I'm preaching to the choir, so the choir need to be singing. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I and I and I need y'all singing in the right key. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and you know, I, I, because I because because the choir, we, we gotta have we gotta have one sound. Mm. We gotta have we gotta have one sound, and so since I'm preaching to the choir, I'm expecting the choir to be the choir. There's an expectation when you say I'm a discipler. Now, now you gotta give up your time. You know, you gotta you gotta invest in people. You gotta come alongside people. You gotta be you gotta be you gotta be how Ray was back in the day when Janice would go do what she was doing. He was in the parking lot talking to people. Oh, he come back and say, you know, I was talking to somebody. And you got you got to be able to do that. Let me see what time it is. Let me, let me squeeze out a little more time. As you talk to a person in this stage, you may hear one or more of these phrases. <clears throat> I need to go to church regularly? Question? I've never heard that before. There's some people in the church now that answer that question the same way. I need to pray regularly and read my Bible regularly? I've never heard that before. How would I even do that? I know the what the Bible says. Said I know the Bible said that that tithing is supposed to go to hell. Let me put that. Tithing. What's that? Now, you, know, you know that's that that's the number one question. Because <laughs> when you want to go out, you don't know where that money coming in. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one question right there. I should have put that at the top. I've always connected with God through nature. Being outdoors is my church. It's, these are some of the things that you will hear. I don't need anyone else. It's just me and Jesus. I need someone to regularly care for me. I know Jesus is God, but isn't karma real too? Trinity? Huh? Now, now, you, now you've got me confused. My wife, my wife and I just got baptized. And on the way home from church, we got into a big fight. What's, what's up with all that? I thought Jesus was supposed to take care of all our problems. Have you ever heard those things before? Mm. As you can tell, there are usually a lot of questions from spiritual infants. And let me take you back to kids. Don't kids ask you a million and one questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mommy, what's yes. that? Daddy, what's that? Why you do this? Why you do that? Blah, 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 blah. That's how it is. It's the same thing with spiritual infants. The key concept is that spiritual infants don't know much. <laughs> and it's true. They're infants. They don't know much. Then they may they may perpetrate like they know much a lot, but they don't know much. They don't understand yet what it means to follow Jesus. That's why it's important for us not only to talk to talk, but to walk to walk. Indeed. It's important for us to be examples. It's, 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 it's important for us to compel them to come, not influence them to run. Mm. They're always there. They aren't all aren't aware of the way of the ways in which they need ch to change. But since we've been there before, 
we're the older kid. We should be the adult. But since we've been there before, we should know how to lead them out of that stage. Mm. So what are the needs of spiritual infants? They need someone to care for them and feed them so they can grow and thrive. Eventually, they will learn to feed themselves like a, like a regular child. But at this point, they really don't know how to. They need personal they need personal attention from a spiritual parent. They need protection and guidance during this vulnerable stage of discipleship. The devil often will try to get them through those who would lead them astray. You, you, we've been there. We all been there before. We're there right at, now. <laughs> at this stage, they need truth of the Christian faith taught and modeled for them. Taught Brother Mosey, and can I yes. just make a statement right there? Yes. There's so much, you know, there's so many, um, you know, televangelists and so many different ministers, you know, in social media are uh, speaking to. I think sometimes, you know, people get confused. Mm -hmm. You know, because if we say, you know, like, okay, this Baptist church, do it this way, but they preach it that way. So a new convert, a new person, you know, they really don't know, you know, what is right. You know, it's the way that sounds right that leads to destruction kind of thing. So we have a lot of people, I think, that get caught up in those things. Well, they was because they make it look good and sound good on this minister saying and then they're saying the same thing and they're saying no that's not what it means over there and it's very well today it's very confusing you know whereas I think in earlier time it was kind of like everybody was focused on Jesus you know what I'm saying but now it's like a, a focus on who can oratorically say mm. it or interpret it the right way and young converts uh uh not even young, but people, some people who's been in the church a long time, you know, you're trying to get it. You're trying to say, well, is that right over there? You know, and, and, and it can get a little confusing. So when they come in to the church, sometimes, you know, it's hard to decipher now what is right and what is wrong other than the word. You know, we know the word is the roadmap. Yeah. But, you know, like you say, like they, they need guidance through this because it's like a really slope. And, this is, this, and, this, and if you've heard me say this, you've heard, you've all heard me say what I'm about to say. And this, this, this is holds true. We don't care what church you go to. That, that, that we, 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 we can throw that out the window. We have to stop caring about what church people go to and just worry about their souls. Right, and, right, and, and absolutely, it's up, right. And it's, it's, and it's up to us. It's up, it's up to God. I'm sorry. God brings the increase. Right, mm -hmm. right. But I'm just saying mm -hmm. these are things that can, you know, blind or block a person's growth, yeah. you know, until yeah. they get to that stage, I'm saying. Because think think about yeah. it. Think about this, um, Deaconess Gladden. If, um, if David right now saying, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to start my own thing. I'm going to start my own work. Mm -hmm. he, he got a phone. Mm -hmm. He got a camera. He got Facebook. He can start preaching without nobody saying anything to him. And we have a lot of that. We have a lot of misdirection. Right. We have a lot of people manipulating people. Right. And people don't see that they're being manipulated. Right. And so, and so the thing is, you have to, you know, it's it's our job. We can only do what we can do, as far as way it goes. But it, but the key, the, the key thing that about discipling people is that it is our job to come alongside them. It is our job to go where they are and meet them where they are, and show them the way that they should go. And that that that, that doesn't mean they're going to come to hope. And like I said, we don't care about that. God is going to send right. the to hope. Right. But right. but it's our job to go make disciples of the lost. Remember, I always say it's the church's job to go make disciples. I never say it's your job to bring folks back to hope. Right. And so and so yeah, it is. It, we have we have an uphill battle. Deacon is glad. It's it, everybody have everybody wants a voice. Everybody wants to be heard. I don't know how deep you go into social media, but everybody wants to be heard. 
Everybody thinks that their way is the best way. And I just believe that God's way is the best way. Mm. And, you know, right, I feel, that, and that's it. God's that's way it. is the best way. Key. That's it. And so but, I, I, don't, I don't try. I don't try to get into those games. I just present the gospel and let the gospel speak for itself. And so with that, in, you know, I do talk to people. If people have questions, like I think um, Deacon Smith asked me about a, a question, I don't have the answer for her tonight. So I said, wait till I, wait till I can get it. So not so I don't give her something wrong. And then she go tell somebody, well, Pastor Moldy told me that principalities with, with the flying monkeys in the Wizard of Oz. Exactly. But, but you know, I'm just making a statement. I'm not saying, you know, anything is, you know, right or wrong. But in my in my way of looking at it and thinking it sometimes, you know, you're correct, because I know there is innocent, innocent people, you know, seeking. And, you know, I, I don't go deep into social media or anything like that, but just, you know, on the surface, you know, because even myself, sometimes I'll be listening. I'll be like, what, what? Huh? You know, and I think I know, but that's why I still go to Bible study. That's why I still see yes. because I don't want to get confused up. So, well, see, I think, well, know. I think a, a sidebar to the, what we're talking about, I think a, a big misconception in the church is that we don't question what's being said on Sunday morning. It is your job. See, I, I, I do my research and stuff here throughout the week, and I, you know, I give it to you on Sunday. But then it's your job to make sure that I'm right. Right. Mm -hmm. You, you got to take take it and I and all my it'd be twelve years in August of being a pastor of hope. You know how many phone calls I've got to ask me questions about the sermon? One. One. And it really, you know, it was just some clarity, really, just some clarity on what I was saying, but only one. But it's your job to go either either I'm doing a great job or you know there are no questions, but it's your job to go to come back with questions. This, this is your time to say, okay, I got a question from Sunday morning. I was I was sitting in the pews, I got a question, or to call me, you know, maybe Monday later and say, I got a question. I've, I've only got one call. And so the thing is, it's, it's, it's our job to not only to do that digging is Latin, but to teach people to do it because you are hundred percent right. It's a lot of nonsense on the internet. It's a lot of people. It's it's a lot. It's it's a lot because everybody wants to say what they think or what they think they discovered. And so yes, that that's a and it's easy for people to pick up their phone and say, hey, let you know, let me hear what uh somebody got to say because they want to. Uh, I'm not going to the church because they want to take my money and they want to do this. They want to do that. And 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 nobody wants your money. We just want you to be saved. But yeah, but we have to articulate. Yeah, we, we do want your money, though. But that's, that's not our priority. That's what I'm saying. I, <laughs> our priority. I'm our, our priority is that we want you to be saved. We do need money to survive. We need money to survive. And I think people have to understand that, too. It has to be articulated, too. It's not that we're trying to get rich and die trying. We just want to be able to do ministry and ministry costs. We sitting on Zoom tonight. Zoom costs. You know, we go to a church in the summertime when it's 90 degrees outside. It's about, you know, 75 degrees in the church. It's cool. It takes money to to to, to run a ministry. If we want to do things again, like it's the same thing with it depends on what we've learned, what will be our behavior behind what we've learned. Mm -hmm. So the Bible teaches us certain things and the mature will say, you know what, it doesn't feel like, I don't know if I really understand it or if I really get it, but because the Bible teaches it, we kind of step out by faith and try it. And then as we try it, we realize, oh, God is faithful to his promises. But for the baby, every time they hear something new, they change in direction right. because, oh, somebody else says something different. And they shake this, this toy in their face and then they want to mm -hmm. go play with that. And mm -hmm. so they're easily distracted whereas too but then it, it causes us to go dig in the bible and find out mm -hmm. well what does the scripture really say and and then mm -hmm. we want to pray well god i'm still confused and scripture mm -hmm. says well if, if you lack knowledge ask of me well i'm mm -hmm. asking you lord and it's been a week and i still don't know the answer but i'm still mm -hmm. going to ask you right. because I'm, I'm i'm aligning my life with what you've taught mm -hmm. right. and we and we're not, while we're asking him to wait we got to be doing our due diligence too mm -hmm. and seeking his word 
and, and but you know God will show Himself faithful. But one of the things that you say, you know, people they they're, they're hearing out all this this stuff. That's why we have to start growing people up in the church, so that way our members aren't aren't wishy washy. They understand. Okay, you no, know, I have to focus on Christ. I'm not focused on what's going on over here. What's going on over there? Because believe you me, it's it, it, it's it's a race. You know, it's a race, you know, in the church world. People want to, they, they want to have power and they want to have position and they want people to flock to them. So it is that going on, but we have to be aware of that. So in conclusion, spiritual infants have specific needs that must be met in order for them to grow and thrive in their faith. I'm just going to go through them there in your notes. Nourishment and care. Personal attention. Protection and guidance, teachings and modeling, patience and understanding, encouragement and affirmation, community and fellowship, prayer and reliance on the Holy Spirit. By recognizing and meeting these needs, we can help spiritual infants develop a solid spiritual foundation and nurture them into mature disciples of Christ. It is a privilege and a responsibility to come alongside them, support their growth, and equipping them for the journey ahead. And what I did, and we can we can review this more next week before we get started. It's a plan of action for the discipling believers to address spiritual infancy. I, and that's not in your book. I put this together, so this is not in your book. So I want you to take a look at this. And we will discuss this next week before we move on to the next phase. So now we understand that when, when we first come, come alongside people, they're spiritually dead. When they don't know Christ, then there's a new birth and then there's a spiritual infant. But we have to do our due diligence with them as spiritual infants because they are spiritual infants. Are there any questions? No. So the assignment is to review the plan of action. And by review the plan of action, do you mean the plan that we currently are using at Hope or the plan that you just have outlined on the page? Outlined on the page. And we're going to talk about that. Depending on how deep we go, we we may spend our whole time talking about that, but we want to we want to keep moving throughout the book. So if you don't, if you haven't read, it's still time to catch up because we're move, we I want to make sure that we understand these phases. And like I said, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you know we have to understand these so we can talk, we can teach others. And what you'll find for, and I think everybody here is a teacher at Hope. What you'll find is you'll be able to plant these nuggets into your teachings as well. Was this worth your time on tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, it was. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask, um, uh, let me ask Deacon is glad to close us out with prayer. Amen. Father God. Oh, first of all, I would just like to give a praise report. I just thank God I went back into the workforce. Oh, wow. <laughs> part time, Ooh. part time, part time. Of and course. With mm. the Department of Social Services. All right. So just pray for me. Okay. Only three, day, only three days a week, though, you know. <laughs> All right. Were you throwing me a hint? Well, you know, there's still room. <laughs> um. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Father God, in your name, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We just thank you for the Bible study, Lord God. Lord, yes. we thank you for opening up our minds and our hearts, Lord God, that we might meditate on your word, Lord God. And as we go forth, Lord God, help us to be patient, loving, and kind, Lord God, mm -hmm. as we continue this journey in discipleship, Lord Jesus, Lord, because we want everybody to come, Lord, because you said it's not your will that none should perish, but that we all should come into repentance, Lord God, because we are all your children, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you for everyone on the line, Lord, the families, the ones that's not on the line. 
Hope Missionary Baptist Church, Lord God, just continue to bless us, to keep us, Lord God, the churches across the world, the nation, the globe, Lord God, continue to watch over your people, Lord God, Lord, and give us a will and a zeal to continue to study your word, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you and we just praise you. And these and all blessings we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Just so you know, in, in your notes, I put in quite a few questions. So there's some questions we did not go over, but if you get a chance, just look at them and just ponder them as we move forward. I'm going to try to put more questions in our notes to promote discussion like we did tonight. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you all have a good night. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good night. 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 Good night.